Frequency and Friends for another episode. And today we have a very special guest with us. She is an entrepreneur. She is a pro in her trade of choice. And she's a straight up boss. Help me make some noise and welcome the one and only Harp Soul. Let's go. Thank you, guys. My my posse is not loud enough. I'm actually. Let's do that one more time. Let's welcome Harp Soul. Oh, damn. There we go. That's what we needed. This is what we're missing on the episode. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you so awesome. much. I, I, it's, thank you for having me, by the way. And I, it's like honestly my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming, taking the time to, to come sit with us, talk. Um, let me introduce my co-host as well. We have to the left of me, Jay Static, mm-hmm. and to the right of me, DJ M. And of course, behind the cameras, we got Cam from Lucid. And then we have your lovely lady. I'm going to call them the Glam Squad. Is that yes. okay to call them? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Okay, awesome, man. Thank you guys all for, for joining us. And, of course, Harp, thank you. Um, you took the time to come out. You have come to sit with us. We're going to have some fun. Mm-hmm. We want to know about your story. I'm going to call it a story to fame because you are famous. No. Uh, yeah, you're <laughs> very famous, yes. And um, you're an entrepreneur. You've you know done so much in the industry of not only makeup, but just branding in itself. So we want to hear about all that. Uh, first of all, how's your visit to Toronto been? I love Toronto. Toronto, if honestly, sometimes I tell my husband, Zufir, I say, if we didn't have kids and we didn't have this family and this life here, I would move to Toronto. Toronto is where it's at. You guys are so cool. And for a Vancouver, right, to say that about somebody in Toronto, like, Thank you, Toronto. yeah. Finally, we get a Vancouver yeah. person to admit it. I love it. Toronto. I've always had, from the first time I came here in 2013, I believe, Oh, Fail. they didn't. Did that's, we actually do my, that's actually my, my you laptop. You told us all to turn it on silent. Fail. <laughs> no. Guilty. The guy who never answers his you phone. Close the studio door. That's a party foul. Huh? Take close your shot. Door. Yeah, can you close the there studio door? There you go. Take your shot. Can you close the studio door? Party foul. Take your shot. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, let's that's go. That's easy. Okay. I like this. Are we all going to take a shot? Are we all going to take one for his foul? All right. Cheers. 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 Cheers to Toronto being better than Vancouver. Mm. <laughs> okay, I never said that. Don't get me kicked out of Vancouver. I, I think, just said I love Toronto. I think we all say that. Um, I always say to my wife, you know, uh, the same thing. Mm-hmm. We'd have kids, all the family, my parents mm-hmm. and all that. I'd go to somewhere like Florida, somewhere warm. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm glad you chose a colder place and uh, a it's better not, place. It's not the ambient. It's, it's more the people of Toronto. Mm-hmm. You guys are just so cool, chill. Everyone has a vibe about them. You haven't been here enough, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I go downtown and I'm just like, every time I meet these amazing people, I'm just like, everyone is just so kind and warm here. We are known no for the... No pretentiousness. We're known for the screw face. Screw we're face known capital. for yeah. attitude. Have you we're been like, to Vancouver? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. We think the same thing. You guys are so nice. Yeah, and everyone in Vancouver is super nice. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. Well, like Vancouver, anyways, we will take the compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your your trip here. What are you here for? Let's tell everybody. So earlier this year, we were here for our master class, and we taught it at the Solarium, and it was such a success. And thank you so much for being a part of it. This time, we're here for our one week academy, where we teach our hair and makeup program to students that want to be certified. And um, our Hair and a Makeup Academy has been around since 2011. And I always like to do this plug. And we're the largest hair and makeup, well, recently we've just become the largest hair and makeup academy, South Asian Makeup Academy in Canada, with oh, over 5,000 yeah, alumni. Let's make That's some crazy. noise for that. Come on. What an accomplishment. That is huge. Good yeah. for you guys. And it's amazing that your your work can take you all over the country. Mm-hmm. And um, have you, do you guys go across the border? Everywhere. To the state? Really? We've been everywhere. I've been from the Dominican to like Bahamas to Switzerland. Wow. Uh, I, I like everywhere, every continent I I have hit. And honestly, this has been a whirlwind of a dream. Uh, something that I was not even allowed to pursue as a child, like doing hair and makeup. Uh, if you want to get right into it, I remember when I told my parents I wanted to do hair and makeup, they're like, Teri sorki bindi da kosni barna. Ja ke school ja, kar, jo like have the corporate job. And I did that. I did, I climbed that corporate ladder. But I've always come back to my art. And my art is, like for me, Pink Orchid Studio is not just a means of an income or a source of income. It's my independence. It's my liveliness. It's my. It's the way that I interact and meet with new people. It, I, it's it's the way that I get to express art, 
and that's why I we founded the POS Academy as well because I feel like every woman deserves that. Every one of us deserves our sense of independence, and we deserve like a place in this world where we feel like we belong or we we could. Act. I feel like I'm doing a TED talk. And no, like, it's uh, <laughs> good. it's good. I just no, get absolutely. into it. Yeah, yeah. 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 But like, I re- that's why we did it. It's because I feel like this company has given me so much joy that I just want to share it with everyone. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody who can follow their passion or their dream and actually follow that pathway mm-hmm. and then make a, a livelihood off, off of it. I mean, yeah. what that's living the dream. Literally, yeah, it right? is. And I would do it for free every single day. Wow. Yeah. So I'll keep Seriously. that in mind when I got to get my... I didn't do it. All, yeah. all, all, all the brides <laughs> listening right now, they're like, yo, <laughs> you said you would do it for free. <laughs> they're like, cut, edit that out. <laughs> my manager is here. And yeah, I you're going to be getting bare emails after this. Yo, my wedding's coming up. Oh, you said man. you do it for free. You know, the j- running joke in our company is if you want anything done, just ask Harp. Because I never say no. I'm like, okay. That's why I have my management team. That's always like, wait a minute. No, you need yeah, that. They put me in check. So take us back to... Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I got a quick question mm-hmm. for you. I saw on your social media, is it Harper or Harp? Is that your Gori name? So, or? so really, it's Har- Harpinder, Harpinder. Gor, okay. Rai. Yeah. Then I got Rai. married to Let's a Let's make some noise for the Rai. Rai. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I married um, my husband, Suk, and I became a soul hall. But I've always loved the name Harper. Since I was a teenager, my friends used to call me Harper. That's why it's Harper. Got it. It's not because it's cool. It's Harps, Harper, and Pinde. Those are my three names. Okay. We always uh, have the running joke mm-hmm. about our like our Gore names when we were coming up. What's you, your Gore name? T- uh, Terry. That's it. <laughs> yeah. My I'm Nick- surprised it's not Paul. No, my dad's name is Paul. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have a Gore name. Mine's JJ. Yeah. JJ? Okay. I grew yeah. up with Indians. Yeah, he grew I, up. With, yeah. He, he was lucky. He didn't... Uh, I heard, actually, uh, one of your... Your stories of like you know growing up in BC. Mm-hmm. And congratulations again, uh, not again, but congratulations on turning 40. I just saw that uh, yeah, the other no. day. Let's make some noise for Harp turning 40. Um, I am so not your typical auntie, but I am an auntie. Yes. You, did you just enter auntie auntie zone now? Is that 40 considered? Take that auntie back zone? right no. now. <laughs> Those are some fighting words. It's, How dare you? No, I'm, I'm joking. I, I, I um, consider myself uncle. When uncles call me Paji, I'm like, okay, I'm an I, uncle. I'm now. your cool cool <laughs> mussy. That's what go. I am. That, that's what we'll stick with. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I saw that you endured a lot of racism as a child growing yes, up did. in that time. There wasn't a lot of Punjabis, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Um, take us back to that time and how you connected with your art and how you got through your childhood, the support that you had in terms of your art. Uh, take us back to Little Harper. Little Pende. Um, <laughs> Little Pende, if I could go back, I would give her a big hug because I always felt like I never belonged in this world. Um, even in my family at times, I, I always got in trouble <laughs> my parents are going to watch this and they're going to nod their heads like, yeah, it's true. Uh, if, if someone ever told me I can't do something as a child, that's the only thing I ever wanted to do. I would obsess with it. I would be like, why am I not allowed to do this? I'm going to go do it. So as a little Indian girl that wasn't allowed to really go out, I grew up in a very strict household. My dad was militant. And now being older and being a parent, I completely appreciate it because I want to be just like him and emulate the fact that my kids are not allowed to sleep over or anything like that. But growing up, I hated it because I was like, I'm not allowed to go to sleepovers. I'm not allowed to hang out with friends. I have this long gota. I have a much, like, what? Like, why can't I just be like Stacy? Right? I, and it was never ever in my kismet, it seemed like at that time. But my BB was my shining light. My nanny raised me because my parents were both immigrants. My ma- dad, I come from very humble beginnings and they did well for themselves, but my dad was a mill worker and my mother was a housekeeper and they worked all the time. They had five kids, so I'm one of five. And um, my BB raised me, but my BB raised me telling me that I could be and do anything that I wanted. Like I was the smartest, the prettiest, the, the, the shiniest, like she just treated me like I was her trophy. And not just me, all of my sisters and all of my siblings. So going back to that, like at home I was praised, but when I would go to school, I was, I suffered so much racism. I was one, me, my sister, and one other girl, her name was Karen, were the only three Indo-Canadians in, in, our, our, in, in our elementary school that were brown. I remember I used to go home. Uh, there was one memory I have. Uh, me and my sister got chased home, and um, there was these kids, Gore kids, that were running after us, chucking rocks at us and saying, go home, Hindu. And I was in grade two. Like, That's my crazy. whole life, That's I've crazy. experienced this. In kindergarten, I remember kids used to chuck pebbles at me. Like, I, was, I grew up in an area of Surrey, which is kind of, it was called Guilford, which was 
predominantly um, Caucasian. Ca 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 Caucasian. <laughs> That's Caucasian. <a> <laughs> Caucasian, yeah. Um, it was predominantly white, and um, it was hard. But then we moved to an area where, the, where I found my neighbor was a, in, uh, like an Indian and she was Punjabi. And that's kind of where I started feeling a little bit normal. And then we went to high school and we dominated. There was up everywhere. It was awesome. Damn. That, if you we told went, somebody that today, like telling him, you know, that there was mostly Gore in Brampton, that's the same thing as Surrey. That's mm -hmm. how it was early 90s. And yeah. then as you yeah. got into the late 90s, we all just kind of showed up from yeah, all the different places up. in the city, it right? Was awesome. Yeah. yeah now there's just like way too many. Yeah. <laughs> now, they're, now they're serving Bronte in the cafeteria. <laughs> and yep. It's like a whole nother thing, what? right? Yeah. Is it so yeah. I have no idea. Like, I've heard stories of like, kids like, that were like embarrassed to eat like Indian food at school. I was like, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I thought the high school like, serves normal. Bronte. I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> My high school had kabaddi tournaments and stuff. Huh? Yeah, full out kabaddi tournaments. Crazy. They got like the whole deal. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Wow. So, um, moving forward into your teen years, like, what was it that was it always makeup for you? Was it always. art? Was it drawing? You know why it was makeup? Because my dad told me I was never allowed to do it. So you're gonna do the so opposite. So I was like, I only want to do makeup. Nice. I used to like go into my mom's makeup drawer, play with her, um, uh, like Cover Girl. Um, I was telling my students this, this the other day. I was like, do you guys remember when you, we used to go to our mom's makeup drawers? You guys would not. But as us girl, Indian girls, hey, don't all, of our, out moms, of yeah, all of our moms had this green <laughs> compact that was a cover girl compact. And it was way too ivory for their skin tone. But we all, they all had it. And they had that one lipstick that they used for lipstick and as blush. And that was my makeup drawer. And I would just play with it all day long. And my grandmother really loved, to this day, actually my grandmother's a Shikin and she still has red nails. She wears rings on all her fingers. She gets, she does her makeup. Wow. She gets pedicures, manicures. She always looks, the, so she is who I kind of idolized and wanted to be like. So makeup, I was obsessed with it. My mom still has books of mine because of my math books. My, I would get in trouble when I would go home my teacher would say she was supposed to be doing math, but instead I was doing face charts and drawing eyeliner on eyes and like just doing faces and doing makeup on What is, what is a, a face five. chart I'm guessing is the outline of a face? It's a face where you draw makeup on and back then there was no such things as face charts. Uh, like now they have them at Mac and like in our, in our, in our class that we teach, we, we give our students face charts so they could do makeup on a face. But that's as, in grade three, I remember doing face charts, and on my math, instead of handing in a math assignment, I would just hand in a face full of makeup. If you had with patent, really good eyeliner, if you had patent uh, face charts back then, it would have been oh, a business in itself. There would be no pink organizer. <laughs> <just be falling. laughs> That's crazy. I'd be falling. That is awesome. Um, moving forward to mm -hmm. meeting your partner, I saw somewhere that you said you did your own makeup at your own wedding. I did. That I did. So I met Sufir when we were in high school. That's a, another story in itself in the sense that I wasn't, I was, I, like I said, I came from a very strict household. I wasn't allowed to date. And um, so in, in one of the dances, I decided I was going to be rebellious. And I told my dad I was going to go to the library. And I went to, and to a school dance. And I let my hair down. I put on some lipstick. I did my eyeliner. Wait, wait, you opened the gut? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh I opened the gut. <laughs> and I went to the school dance. And my... My husband now, which was a year or two older than me, um, he was at the school dance and he saw me. He thought I went to a different school, even though I walked by him every single day with my goth. He did not recognize me. So he was finding me in the adjacent high school, which was Fleetwood at the time, every lunch hour until one of his friends is like, you know, that's Harpinder. <laughs> And yes, and, and that's how it really, all wow, started. That is awesome. It's, so it was the story of letting down the gut. I'm doing <laughs> quick math, uh, 16 to 40. Wow, that's quite a, a, long, a time. long time. Longer yeah. than uh, He's more family. than half your life. Yeah. yeah, he met my brothers when they were six and eight. Oh wow! And wow. now my brothers are like 30, and they're the bestest of friends, all of them. They're actually hanging at my at my house today. Nice. And when I'm not here, they're like Damn. they come gone, move out. They come move <laughs> in when I'm out. <laughs> that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that your BB has swag. That was pretty awesome because we kind of flew by that. Mm -hmm. um, big shout out to her being a big inspiration, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after you had your wedding, you did your own makeup. Tell us about the creation of Pink Orchid. So I founded this company with my cousin Shannon. And at that time, I really, really wanted to do makeup. I was like, this is something that I want to do, especially after I had done um, hair and makeup for my own wedding. And my photographer at the time, which was Sunny Images, um, he had 
really encouraged me. He's like, you should open your own makeup studio. And I, I was like, how am I going to open? My, I've already went to school. I already have a good job. Now I'm married. Finally making that corporate dollar. I don't know if I should do this. And he's like, no, you should. There's great money in it. But that's not why I wanted to do it. I was just like, ah, uh, it's not like I, I, I want to do what I'm supposed to do. So one day I was sitting at, I used to work at BCA. I was an underwriter for insurance and it was a great company to work for, for and it still is hopefully. Um, so I was, <laughs> I was, my, my BCA mom was named Manjeet and she was sitting next to me and she said, Hey Harp, do you do hair and makeup? I didn't do hair and makeup. I was like, yeah, I've all, I'm a firm believer from day one. If someone knocks on your door with an opportunity, just open it and say yes, because that's God's way of telling you, Hey, I'm going to introduce this blessing to you. So I was just like, okay, yeah, I do it. I've never done touched a face in my life. I just done friends and family for like giggles right and so I said yes and her daughter came from Toronto the next week and I googled how to do a bridal bun and put together this bridal kit and I did her hair and makeup what year and, was that uh 2008 October 30th oh damn you wow. remember take to the T oh I changed my life that <laughs> one day changed my life and I remember it vividly because I was getting her ready and I was so nervous I was like perspirating I was like oh my god she's gonna hate it I end up doing her makeup I turn her around and I show her the mirror and she starts to cry you guys and I'm thinking pack your bags because she hates it and I'm like literally so scared because I thought she's crying because she hates it and she's like I love it I've never looked so pretty and that was the moment, like that adrenaline rush that I got. I was like, wow, this is what it feels to make another woman look beautiful. I knew I had to quit my job. I had to pursue this full time. That That's was crazy. it for me. Wow. Did you have to touch the makeup after the? I was going to say that. I would be stressed <laughs> about was, her ruining was, the makeup on I her face. I was really <laughs> scared that she was going to kick me out of her house. So the fact that she just cried because she loved it, I was like, I'll fix it. I'll do it again. Wow. It was, That's that crazy. Was my, that was my that was the pinnacle point of my career and that's when it all changed for me. Man, that, that is an awesome story. Mm -hmm. And I, I really want to focus on what you said there about never saying no to an opportunity. Yeah. A lot of people out of fear will say no, or I'm not ready yet mm -hmm. or whatever. I think until you jump into the fire, mm -hmm. you don't know that you're capable of certain things. Totally. You just, fear is the only thing that holds us back. Mm -hmm. Everything in my life, if I've ever not accomplished anything in my life it was because of fear and I, I no longer allow that and I really haven't allowed it allowed fear to really interfere interfere with my dreams because I feel like what's the worst that could happen I'll fail so what I'll get up and go again I mean that's easy easy to say for you now you know two decades in the business but like you guys can speak on this as well people are trusting you guys on the biggest day of their life. Yep. So there's got to be a lot of pressure with that, with you guys, with music and making yeah. sure you get everything right in terms of, you know, production, sound, all that with yourself. You got to show up on time. You got to make sure the makeup is right. It's got to like how to walk us through the process of meeting a bride and then to the final day of her, her wedding. Well, since the inception of Pink Orchid Studio, things have changed so much. Like our stream, the process of streamlining, streamlining um, a bridal booking, it actually has a lot to do with our CFO and our manager, Emma. She handles all of that now. But in, she, in the beginning... She's a big Raptors fan, right? She... Yeah. <laughs> like, she's the actual real boss. She yeah. does, runs everything. Um, and right now, basically what happens is girls will... Back in the day, girls would come in, we'd meet with them, because I really think, it, be, back then especially, I, it was really important for me to pick my clients as well. I'm not everyone's artist. I mean, my time is something. So I may not jive with some people, so I would like to sit with them, meet with them, and hear about their stories. I'm a big story person. I love stories. I want to know about everyone's love story. I want to know why you start. i I'm just been always been that way. So I would meet with my clients, and I would ask them why they're getting married what is like why am I the right artist for you and then once we determine that we would do the contract and then we would set up a trial we and we go from the trial to the booking now it's completely different um, now it's come to a point where like we have so many artists we're all across Canada you it's like a central booking system once you get booked in with your with your artist your artist contacts you and then you form that relationship so with my brides um, Sometimes I don't even, it's not that I don't have time. They just, I'm so lucky that they trust me enough to just send me their address and I show up on the wedding day and I meet them for the first time and we take it from there. That, I mean. But well, that comes from experience. Yeah. yeah. Like yes. I couldn't do that before. Now I could walk into any room and I, 
I got you. I feel and like that, that's I, the same thing with same us. Same, yeah. all yeah. vendors I, are the exact yeah. same with that. Like at the beginning, mm-hmm. yeah, you have all, for us, it's just nervousness. You go in, you make sure you have that meeting. So you, you speak to them, you understand them fully. Then you know what you're walking into. Yeah. Then both parties are happy. Yes. Now you have a brand. Yeah. When they come to you, they're automatically expecting, which a you know, level. and you're expecting to yeah. do something as well, which is... And you, you have the experience now to read the room. Yeah. yeah. You just know. You're like, okay, I get yeah. this crowd. I know what to yeah. do. Easy. You guys are the best, by the way. Have you ever like had a situation? like I know for me as a DJ, mm-hmm. sometimes I've been to gigs and like I don't even know who the bride and groom are, what they look like. And I'm like, oh, like walking around, they say hi. And like, I'm like, I don't know who this <laughs> do you, Have you ever had that? Like you've gone to, or you met a bride or like a past bride? Or a yeah, there's some. Like honestly, out of the thousands and thousands of brides that I've done, and there has been thousands, I could... I'm not just trying to say this. It's not that I'm trying to... I've been very lucky. No, I don't know what you, it is. You've been doing it a while. You can talk your shit on this yeah, show. No, I know, I know. I wish yeah. I could. And yeah. there's only like two that come to mind. I've been very lucky. My brides have not been bridezillas. I feel like they're like sometimes absolute shit to everyone around them. But to us, they're so nice. Well, you, you don't want to talk shit to the person who's painting your face. Like, I don't <laughs> maybe, think... Maybe, you know? maybe. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. I feel like they're just so like nervous energy. And maybe they'll be like mom why'd you do this or dad but to us they're like okay where were we like they're so sweet they're so nice to us actually me and my brides are like really good friends and we go out and we actually have a good time like there's not a whole lot that i could say bad about my brides there's some that you know i walked into the room and i cried afterwards and it had nothing to do with the way that they treated me it was everything to do with the way that they treated others around it, oh, us wow. in the room mm-hmm. Have, have you ever had to, like, walk away from a client, like, mid-makeup? Has that ever happened? No. No. You always finish the not. job. I always finish the job. Sometimes they may not like the job. Three times in my career, someone has not liked the job. And I wipe their face and I do it again. Nice. And that's okay. Yeah. I, I, we have we've a lot of time for that. And only once it was a bride. Twice it was, like, um, we were just doing, like, a photo shoot and the... The model didn't really like it because she really wanted natural makeup. So then I was like, oh, okay, we're really, really going to do just tinted moisturizer? Fine, we'll do tinted moisturizer. But once it was a bride. And it's because she didn't really know what she wanted. Um, she wanted red lips and we did it. And then she didn't want it. So we just had, and I did a smoky eye. I had to do the whole thing again. Yeah, I guess that happens. Like you guys must mm-hmm. get that as well where, you know, the bride and groom want something, you know, in your case, mm-hmm. they want, you know, they do their makeup like this every day. They think that that's what looks good on them. That's mm-hmm. what they're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. You as an artist who's done thousands of brides know right off the bat your skin tone, how you look, you know, what's going to look good. Yeah. But convincing that person to do that, they either got to trust you or you, you do in, what you do. In the beginning... I feel like sales has a lot to do with it. And I come from a background of sales and then obviously insurance. But I, I just felt like, I don't know, I, maybe I was, I, I really truly believe I was born to do this. Like when I look at faces, I, do, I, I will never forget a face. I will never forget you. But I will not, not know your name to save this, my, my life. Like well, I just don't know names. We're both right, so you better yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, right dude, right yeah. <laughs> But faces I'll never forget. And people are shocked because I, that's what I do. When I look at you, I analyze symmetry. I look at your eyes and I, I just, that's what I, I feel I, like she's analyzing uh, yeah, me right now. Yeah, and I, I swear, stop, that's what, with my brides too. <laughs> it took so much time and experience Jeez. to get where I'm at right now now where my brides trust me blindly they'll be like whatever you want harp and i it's not that i've earned it i just feel really pri- privileged that they actually give me a break now yeah. because man it was hard well, it was hard gr- like trying to make brand. a name for yourself yeah, you've built that name that brand you deserve that respect i think when you walk in a room how do you, how do you guys deal with that when like somebody's like i only want to play you know, uh, Bindrakia tracks at my wedding, like... <coughs> not to, oh, that's wedding, a bomb. Bro. That's a bomb selection. Of yeah. songs, <laughs> but I've, had know, but cli- I've had the clients, like, sometimes it's, it's hard to deal with. Like, I remember I did this one wedding and, like, the bride and groom were like, we only want, like, if you're playing English music, it has to be, like, oh, house music, EDM. And no, like, hip-hop dirty. and reggae and dance on. Like, yo, your crowd's from Toronto. They want hip-hop, yeah. dance on, and reggae. So then what so do you do? At the Sangeet night, I played a little bit and I'm like, yo, I told you guys. And they're like, all right, cool, just do what you want to do then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, but, like, from like a crowd perspective what we do it's different Mm. bride and grooms think they know what kind of music they want but they don't realize that what they listen to isn't always what the audience listens to yeah so there's always like the safe bet and then it's like all right let me play a little bit we've had it where we play it for the bride and groom and then you see the rest of the dance floor just go like this and it's like look that does not work yeah Yeah. but you don't you don't have to deal with that you sprinkle it in and see how it happens yeah 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 
I feel like, see, what the industry that I'm in, social media trends are so like prevalent and like really brides will come to us and be like, oh, I, I love this image. Can you make me look like Kim Kardashian? And sometimes I have to kind of not wheel them in and bring them back to reality and be like, this is a trend. Do you want to see this on your like wall plastered, blown up five years from now? Is Do you really want this yep. like yeah. turquoise eyeliner? Let's think of this through. So sometimes it's like a, almost acting like an older sister now in my 40s auntie and <laughs> and just kind I'm of walking them it. off the like the plaque you know like the, just kind of telling them like this this is not a trend this is your wedding and hopefully it's your last wedding and you know have you ever done a bride twice i've done a bride three times and it's oh, my wow. best friend oh wow that's it now <laughs> my trick. best friend nice. yeah well yeah. she better be your best friend after <laughs> yeah three times. she's hired me three times and they're always destination <laughs> weddings and you know what the third time i was like then okay lord pay Again. Just like, go to the beach. And she was like, Maki Kara, Shadani. And uh, he happened to be a Gora and they have a beautiful child now. And nice. they well, they have two and they have an amazing marriage. Good That's for sick. them. Third time's a Third charm. Time's Third time's a charm. A charm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Kim Kardashian. I gotta ask you a question. Yes. What is with this phenomena of the Kylie Jenners, the Kim Kardashians, Cardi B's, Nicki mm-hmm. Minaj's of injecting I don't know what it is. I'm going to call it plastic yep. into your face, your mm-hmm. boobs, your butt. Like, what is this thing with women that be- has become this um, want or need to put this stuff into their body? Like, me speaking from mm-hmm. a guy perspective, I've never met a guy or had a conversation. I've had lots of them where we find it attractive. Like, I get, you know, certain things, lip filler, whatever. Mm-hmm. If it looks natural, it looks great. You, if I don't know it's there, then obviously it yeah. looks great. But yeah. the over, like, the, I call it a duck face. Like, yeah, you, know? you look duck lips. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is up with that? From your perspective, well, how do you feel about it? Okay, and if I'm being honest, I feel like somebody must like it for them to be getting it done. Like, obviously, there's... there's. I think it's there's, their friends lying to them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I think because the people around you like or you're, you're to get it's like way. Way. no but it's like it's, right it's like supply and demand like clearly they're getting it done because they're getting the attention I mean you know what women have been suppressed for so long like we've been told what to wear we've been told what to do how to act you know what if they want to get some lip fillers that make them feel good, do it. I, I, I've never been that person that's ever told anyone that they should. If I want to go get my, I don't. But if I did, I have every right to do it. And I'm not just saying that. No. I know that you guys don't think, I don't think there's some things that I would ever do. Because I'm like, oh. But each, to each their yeah. own. And let me be clear. Yeah. Let, uh, women's choice or a man's choice to yeah. do what they want with their own body. That's, it may not uh, be yeah, the most the power flattering. I just it don't know. I thought from a woman's perspective, there was a you're... secret that we didn't know I about. Think, but I also don't think he's I talking think about. also the areas that you live in. I really do. Like, like maybe I, in LA, that's more. That's, I think right. it's. A, I think yeah. it's like a confidence thing. Like sometimes if like a guy's balding, they'll go to Turkey and get a hair transplant. Yeah. If a girl wants a fucking bigger ass, she'll go get a BBL. <laughs> but I isn't mean, there a BBLs level? BBLs are out going but, out now, though. But isn't do there a level that, right? of doing like? Does, Everyone's like, getting their BBLs. Someone who does like yeah, lip yeah. fillers, right? Like life threatening. I've heard. Yeah, it is. Certain. But someone I, who does like lip fillers does it on a little level mm-hmm. compared to someone who does lip fillers and they look like this glass. That's you know what, what I, mean? I mean. Or is it that's the doctor not, or I whoever's that's doing it is you know, being irresponsible? Growing up, let's go back to Binde. Growing up, I'm looking at these magazines in the 90s and you have Kate Moss and you have all these skinny, real thin, skinny role models. That's all we had to look at. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. We had Elle magazine. We had Vogue magazine. When you opened that magazine, you saw really beautiful skinnies. That was never me. I was a chubby girl with the gut. Okay, so when the Kardashians came around and they had a skinny waist and a big kadonk, I was like, oh my God, somebody actually has hips. So I'm always rooting for them because they kind of made me cool. That's true. Yeah, they appeal they made, to a different They uh, made crowd, women's yeah. bodies <laughs> like accepted. And the fact that we don't all have to be a size zero. You could be a size 12. You could be a size five. You could be a size 20. Just rock it. Just be confident. Just mm-hmm. be confident. Yeah, and yeah. even let's speak, let's speak of Kim. I know she gets a lot of hate. This woman's a billionaire. She's fire. She's fire. Yeah. She's she's business literally acumen business is through the roof. Yeah. yeah. You could say what you want to say about her, but really she's not talking about any of us. She's just counting her paper. Exactly. She's killing it. Like she, she influences. Yeah. Like I think she went vegan for a well, bit or something like everyone's that. Everyone's vegan. Everybody's vegan yeah. now. 
It's well, crazy. that's the thing. Everyone's for, wearing '90s. She wore yeah. '90s pants. We're all wearing '90s yep. pants. She's yeah, right she sets with the heels, trend. I yeah. wear. Absolutely, like that's if crazy. you can set a trend, everybody else is the the follower in the in the case. But mm-hmm. like she is literally mm-hmm. setting trends, mm-hmm. and now she just partnered with the NBA. Like the yeah, first, that's crazy. That is bro, her skims. Is that, her okay, skims can you guys tell me is that a big deal? Out. Skims. Huge. I don't know what skims what, are. Skims are like Spanx. Like the tight stuff. That yeah, shit was know, sold out everything everywhere. I saw Neymar and I was like, how the fuck did she That would be a good... What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I'll skim myself up, you know? I'm wearing skims. Oh, this question, is skims. We, skims. Who had the question now Not in sponsored. our group? We were t- uh, trying to figure out, like, you know, makeup questions. Somebody mm-hmm. asked the question of how to draw a six-pack on themselves. Easy. It was you. Bro. It was you. I've, I've, actually, I've actually done this once. Asking for a I've friend. Actually, I've actually done this once. When we first started, we couldn't get brides because no brides will just come out of thin air and be like, "Oh, you're a new artist. I'll book you." So we had to do a lot of like fashion weeks, Vancouver Fashion Week, and all those things. So I, my job was the girl that drew in abs on the guys. No way. One hundred percent. It's like that bubble bond music, music video abs. from back in the day. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, question for you back to the business side of thing, mm-hmm. things. Um, as a woman, you know, you, mm-hmm. you talked about leaving a secure job and having, you know, your livelihood mm-hmm. all set. You went to school for whatever you did mm-hmm. as an underwriter in the insurance mm-hmm. fraud industry. I'm mm-hmm. going to call it because I don't like insurance. <laughs> it was actually not yeah. that cool. It was home insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but le- leaving that, like, what would you say to a young harp, you know, that wants to make a career out of, mm-hmm. you know, artistry, makeup, hair, um, trying to build a business and trying to build livelihood for herself in that industry. Not even just in the makeup industry, in any industry. Like, I'm very lucky that I had a supportive household that supported me afterwards. Like, first my parents were like, no, but then my in-laws were like, hey, listen, if you want to do this, you are going to do this and you're going to be the best in your craft. Then do it. But if you're not, if you're going to do this half-ass, sorry, I don't know if I can swear, you but can then, swear. then, yeah. then yeah. don't do it. Just stay where you are or, or otherwise you take it to the top. And that's the mentality of always, and that's the mentality that I always teach my students as well. Listen, we came into this world alone. We're going to go out of this world alone. That's it. When you die in your deathbed, are you going to be like, oh man, I wish to work harder? Or are you going to be like, I should have taken that chance on myself? If you don't believe in yourself, who, who the hell is going to believe in you? If I don't believe in me, and I've, I'm telling you, I've been in the highest of highs and the lowest of lows in my life. And if I didn't believe in me thinking that, you know what, I, my life is worth more than, than just this, there's no way I would have gotten out of it. You have to do it. What else do you have to lose? Mm-hmm. Especially us, like us South Asians, yeah. we're so lucky. We have such a great support system. We have mom, me, cha, chit, thai. Like we have a roof over our head, especially when you're young. Mm-hmm. That's your time to actually discover what you're good at and pursue it. What, what would you say to a young mother? Let's say, you know, you just had mm-hmm. children and, you know, you had to take time off of work. This is a, you know, a scenario for a mm-hmm. lot of women these mm-hmm. days. You take time off of work, you know, you get your maternity leave. Yep. They're looking for something to do in between. You know, obviously, when you went into your business, you went full-fledged. You took it right to the top. It took up, I, I can imagine, a lot of your time. Uh, How- I should correct you. I, 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 did, I did take it right away but for the first year what I did was I worked full time in both positions okay so I I obviously know risk management I come from insurance so I was like let's let's do this but also let's do this I used to work 40 hours at my job and then I used to, I used to come home and work until midnight doing pink orchid the back end all of it so I used to work around the clock but I had no children I had no responsibilities I was living with my in-laws life was good mm-hmm. so I poured myself into that my business but if for someone that has children and that is willing to that's wanting to get get into any career that they or even may hair and makeup i i would say find a community which will support you and help you because you don't want to just leave your kids with anyone that you don't trust Mm -hmm. hopefully you have great in-laws or great parents that will help you but you should be taking courses on the side you should be excelling your skills you should be practicing and even like when I started my career I worked for free for for the for first two years can you believe that I never charged anyone I just needed faces are you serious yes oh. I just needed faces I just anyone that would want to get their hair and makeup done come to me I will do your hair 
I mean, I will do your makeup. I will do it because I just needed to show proof that I could do this work. So I had a portfolio that, because what came first, the chicken yeah. or the egg? You it, ha- it doesn't exist these days. Ask these Not guys. You work with a lot no. of young guys. Mm-hmm. Nobody will even ste- step out of their bed now for without knowing the dollar the, value. Of what they're gonna they're never going to get that dollar exactly. value then. Because yeah. if you don't have that hustle and you don't have that, like you have to. With hard work, there's no other result than success. Mm-hmm. You put in that work, you will get it. It's that simple. Absolutely. You guys Chromat. opened up what your you own um, studio. No, no, that too. But you guys did your own lineup of products. Yeah. That was correct. When I heard, of, like, obviously I heard about you guys and heard everything you guys were doing. But when I heard you guys did your own line of products, yeah, that's when I was like, oh, that's pretty legit. Like, and not that, a lot of people but, are but doing but getting it. Getting to that point is probably like crazy hard. tough, right? Like. You probably had to like go to like obviously like I feel like for us as DJs the goal is like oh we're going to do receptions and mostly receptions was it like oh yeah we'll do anything right now that we want to get to only like do you only do bridal now? Yes, um, it, and, uh, I I would like to I would like to do everyone. My manager only lets me do bridal because <laughs> uh, I just don't have the time. I have kids, I have other businesses, and then I, to manage it all, it becomes really hard. So at this point, I'm only doing bridal unless like it's a volunteer work or I'm giving back to my community that I will do work like for free all the time. And I do, <laughs> um, but non-bridal, I just don't have the time for it. I like guess, literally I just don't yeah, have the but time then for it. That you get to focus on other parts of the brand. Yeah, right? Cause like I work, I do brides from Thursday. Fr- I actually stopped doing brides cause Thursday I thought brides? I retired. Oh. I was like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Only because like, I'm like, I should be spending time with my kids. I got super depressed. I, and my husband was like, Listen, you need to go back to work because you're not happy anymore. You're not like if you're not happy, we're not happy. What is it going to My art brings me joy. So, I don't think at this point in my career I will ever stop doing brides because my art is the reason why I I do what I do. But all of it else, like my day is so scheduled. Like from the moment I wake up, first thing I do is look on my phone and I'm like, "Okay, this is all the list of things. These are the inter- this is what I have to do. This is where I'm filming." And she calls me at nine. We have a three-week call, and we're like, okay, let's get our day started. So Monday to Thursday, I'm working on my business, on my business. And then Friday to Sunday, I'm working in my business. Wow. That is nuts. You know, somebody, an elder said to me, a person who's not working is useless. And they say that, like, mm-hmm. you should, you know, everybody has this uh, thing in their mind that they want to retire at a certain age. Mm-hmm. I think retirement is being able to do what you want when you want where in a sense that you can still work like you said you enjoy your work it probably doesn't even feel like work it's what it it is who you are kind of thing somebody who has to get up and go to a job and provide for their family that's a necessity that's different but getting to the point where you can enjoy what you do whether it's music (laughs) production it's you know djing wherever you're at in in your life that is the goal i think the end goal for it everybody it is and being an entrepreneur is not easy like no. you guys know that it's more yeah. hours than working it's a job 100%. Hours, 100% it's more stress yeah. and now with social media it's like a double edged sword sometimes you're like like everyone's applauding you next day you're fish paper like you know what i mean like it's it's not easy but the best part about my job is if when i decided when i bought uh, pink orchid studio like 14 months ago, I actually, I I bought my partner out and um, I decided if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it completely my way, which meant I'm going to assemble a team of women and I'm going to basically assemble a team of women that inspire me, that make me want to get up and actually work harder for them. So right now I, I'm so blessed. Like if I felt like saying, like, I want to say the fact when the, the reason why I am where we are, we're in the last year is because of these girls. And I'm not just saying that. Every single day we wake up, we check in on each other. We have this community of POS family. And you guys have it too. Like you guys have a brotherhood. Yeah. We have a sisterhood. And when, when you don't want to work hard, you get up and you work harder for them. Because they show up every single day to work. So you want to show up every single mm. day to work and give it your all. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, that's everything. And I think that building that community in, in within POS has been like everything to us i love you girls <laughs> make some noise for the glam squad come on no they're yeah. amazing you know this is like one sisterhood plus yeah. tenth of them <laughs> you you talked about being you know some days on at a super high some days being in your words fish paper oh yeah um, 
a lot of your business and your brand mm-hmm. is social media. How do you deal with the fish paper days and the people talking shit and the haters and all that? Like, how do you absorb that? How do you respond to it? How do you get through a day? And when this it's is tough? a great question because a lot, a lot of people do ask me this question, and I don't. I, I genuinely feel like. In my world, um, not only do I have Pink Orca Studio, but then I have my own personal account, which I post so much of my personal life on. And I just do it authentically because I don't know how, how to live any other way. Like if I'm gonna be showing my life, I'm just gonna show it the way it is. No makeup, chundi in the hair, PJs. And when you show that self, like that side of yourself to the world, you are open your, opening yourself up to judgment. That's just the way it is. I understand that. I know the terms in, that come with it. And it is a double-edged sword. The only thing that's gotten me out of that is um, my friends and family that I surround myself with. Uh, when before, like in the last three years, I quickly learned who are the social, social climbers who are there for the limelight. And I had to go through a lot of crap in my life in order for me to hit rock bottom and to see and take inventory of the six people maybe handful of people that were in my life those are the people that are still in my life and those are the only people that I will ever make time for and when I go through these spouts in my life where if I say something wrong and now I'm getting like annihilated on social media they're the ones that come over take my mind off of everything and they're like listen what's the goal and it's Two of them, three of them are sitting right here, and most of them are my friend, my actual family. And they will say, like, remember Tukate, like, why do you do what you do? Let's focus on that. Stop listening to the noise. And you need those people in your life. Absolutely. And when you really think about, when I think about the way that they treat me, it's a reflection of how you treat them. No matter how big you get, how successful you get, prioritize your time for the people that you love. It's so important because if you're not giving the time to the people that you love, they're not going to be there for you when you need them. That, um, that word on a lighter note, social climber, I just learned that the other day on Selling Sunset, that show on uh, Netflix. There's tons of them. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know what a social, you guys know what it is? Yeah, no, so it's a, somebody who clings on to somebody else to, for status, basically. Uh, like, jokes. I want to meet Sherry Mon because I know JJ. You know, <laughs> you know? You know Sherry Mon? No, yes, yeah, he does. He, was just he knows a him. lot of people. Yeah, he knows a lot of Sub people. Sub JJ. <laughs> Should I start singing? Maybe this will be my singing career. You. No problem. Um, no. I want to talk about your brand. So walk us through, you know, creating, uh, not your brand, what I mean is products. So yeah. you, you have a line of products that yeah. you sell, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how do you vet, like, the type of product that you're going to use? Um, where do you, like, I, I don't, obviously, you don't want to give your trade secrets. but no, like, I can't. How does that whole process work? So, Honestly, it came out of necessity. So when we first started Pink Orchid Studio, sorry, okay. um, now we have so many products. Like for example, there's ev- like 50 shades per each brand for your skin color. When I started, there wasn't even hair extensions. There wasn't hair padding. And now these brides want these elaborate buns to have these chunis stay on, but there's no hair padding. So we had to create it. Like we literally only created products that helped me do my job. That was it. Mm-hmm. Even eyeliner. The way, the reason why we have black caviar, which is our, our cult favorite, there are top sellers and mud bath and um, lit liner, is because they're dolly proof. You could cry your eyes out and it's not gonna move. No Damn. way. That's crazy. Yeah. That All of our cool. brides say to us, "Oh my God, I cried and then I was partying and I went to my gro- the groom's house and my makeup never moved." That's why we why we had our product line. It's not so. I could sell it to the masses. It was just so it could help me do my job and do my job right. And then people were asking, what are you using? So then we, st- we created the line. It's based on a necessity. That's it. And I how, only use the products you, that I use. How do you figure out what you want to put in it? Like a story I was reading uh, earlier mm-hmm. this week was, mm-hmm. uh, you guys probably know more about it than I do, mm-hmm. Jacqueline Hill, uh, yeah. a cosmetic lady yep. who basically had stuff in her um, st- things that she was selling and people kind of started bashing for her for it. And uh, correct me if I'm getting yep. the story wrong, but she had to like close down her company and like That's she crazy. went bankrupt. I, I don't really know. What happened there. So what, what I'm, I'm really bad at social media in the sense that I post a lot, but I'm a poster and ghoster. Uh-huh. So I post and I leave. I don't really check what's going on. Do you, Otherwise do you know be... anything about that uh, whole no, situation? Do you guys know? Oh, you broke the rule, everybody. Oh, Poor shot. Poor shot. Poor shot. Poor shot. shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a half of it. That—that's another rye in the background. Sorry, okay? <laughs> I'm 
So are we doing shots? No, no, no. Yeah, are so we? Oh, Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, but that happens. Like, how do you, do you have full so control I, of what yes, goes in I your do. product? I do. And well, you, at first I did it. I uh -huh. was just like labeling. I would bought some products, like they, some lashes and put a private. You can do that now. You can yeah. order anything from China, slap your name yeah. on it, and it's done. Except for I don't do that. I only make my products in Canada. Oh. Let's, or let's in move those away from her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I only make my products in Canada. Yeah. Well, not all of them, but most of them, especially if they're going on your face, they're made in Canada. Okay. Like, I... I'm really mindfully really trying to make somewhat of a difference. And I swear if it was in China, I could be bigger, but yeah. then I wouldn't feel good about it. Okay. So yeah. you stand by your product. You know what's in it. I Anybody stand who by Were it. they ever yeah. made in China? Yeah. yeah. Our lashes. Not in China. Where are Japan. They? Nope. <laughs> Indonesia. Bangladesh. <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> Taiwan. <laughs> it's basically Our China. Our hair is from India. Is it real hair? Yeah. It's Human hair? It's real something. Like, no, real Remy Indian hair. That's from I don't India. Know what, I don't even know what that and means. And then our cosmetics are made in Canada. So do you guys sell them in store anywhere as well? Yeah. So like, we, have, we have retailers in, oh, uh, in BC. And then we sell them on Amazon. We do Damn. really well on Amazon. And then we sell them at all of our locations. Are you guys at like shoppers or any of the... We like, were at yeah. shoppers. And then we went... COVID happened. Okay. And that... So now we might be somewhere really cool. Can you? We talk about it. Be the place. No, like, yeah, I don't want to jinx it. I, I never talk Sephora. about it. Yeah, there's only <laughs> you don't make there is Sephora. only one. <laughs> you posted our new season without it being out, so I guess yeah. you kind of owe us for that one. Hundred percent. Sephora. We're in talks with getting our um, cosmetics on uh, on large, like all across Canada. Oh wow! Nice. Oh, let's make some noise yeah. for that, man. Good for you. Inshallah. Congratulations. Inshallah. 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 <laughs> that is awesome. Um, I'm talking about being across Canada. We, you know, we started this conversation with your. POS classes that go across, mm -hmm. you know, nationwide. When you finish your course, you are now a POS certified makeup artist. Yeah. Tell us what that means. That means you're the boss. Yeah. You're the bomb. <laughs> no, it means that our our relationship is never just one week long. All of my every single one of my students have my personal number, and it gets exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you could message us at any time, and that relationship never dies. Like you could be in a booking, be like, I don't know what color, like color to use harp help me and i'm there like I, to me it's not i never started teaching because i honestly thought okay this is a great source of income i really want to educate and train the next girl of uh, hair and makeup artist in the next generation so we are always on top of our game um once you graduate from our academy you're fully certified you could go and start your own hair and makeup program you could get pro discounts anywhere and having that pos seal of approval it means a lot two questions on that mm -hmm. one is it like just curious is it like backed in a i could be talking so much shit i don't know Let's exactly what i'm trying shit. to say yeah is it backed somehow like by the, cosmetics. the canadian yes. school board type yes. of deal oh, yes. okay cool that's License sick to, that's bomb to teach okay has there ever been a situation that's where like, somebody does the course and like yeah it's not good enough so I'll come back and do it again or like, is it like are you come made, for like the week yes, course? And I've it's like, actually, boom, here's your no, diploma. no, I've made students come back and oh, take okay. it again. They don't have to pay for it again. Yeah. They just have to, I, if I don't feel like. So there's like some sort of quality control. Yeah, yeah. I don't, if I don't feel like you're ready to really, I, I would just ask, hey, that what, like, for example, here is where some most people mm -hmm. struggle. We'll be like, come back on the fourth day to redo that again. So do you do online courses or do you do in we person do. only? So we started online courses when COVID happened. And you know what? I used to think hair and makeup is a recession proof business. And yeah, and then, then the pandemic yeah. happened. I mean, and, every and every wedding vendor yeah. thought yeah. they were recession proof and then the whole wedding ended up. Like, yeah. That was the scariest time. And I was like, what am I going to do? Like, how are we just going to die like this? Is it one month, two yeah, months, yeah, a yeah. year? You just have to pivot. Like, I, what I've learned in life is you're never dead. You just got to go with the times. Pivot. pivot. So when that happened, we pivoted. We went online. We started doing online sales, pushed um, um, uh, Amazon sales, and we did uh, online academy. So that's when our online academy launched. It was very successful. Wow. And it kept all of us employed for three years. Three years. That's awesome. Did the pandemic last three years? It was three years for us. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, BC was a lot stricter than you guys. Really? Yeah. So maybe we were two years? Something like I don't that. Know. Yeah, it was, it was uh, 2020 till... Was it? I didn't start oh, doing, yeah. doing real bookings until like this year, actually last summer. Oh, so we two, left two to frigging US. We took every US gig that came. <laughs> really? Yeah, during like the last... While we were still in lockdown, US was open. We took every single booking in the US. 100%. Wow. Yeah. 
Bro, when the TK came out, they came like five of them, right? Now I'm ready to rock, bro. Yeah. Fuck this shit. One serious note I want to discuss with you, Harp, is uh, we were talking earlier about balance of work and life. Yeah. And, you know, how you've been able to manage that for, you know, being at the level that you've been at for your career. Obviously, it's weekends, it's evenings, it's early mornings. How were you able to balance your life with your kids for all the moms out there wanting to get into this career path? <laughs> Okay, well, if the right answer it would be I um, have a really great schedule. I, where every morning I wake up and every night before I go to sleep, I see what my day entails. Um, my manager's amazing. She literally puts down everything in my life. I'm like, oh, I'm getting a manicure now. Oh, I'm getting this. Like she literally puts everything in my life, organizes it for me. I think I have, I, I have ADD. I've just never been diagnosed with it. And that's how I'm able to balance everything because I constantly am at this level of like, let's do more, let's do more. And thank God I have a family that supports me, that allows me to live this crazy life and constantly is like, fine, we'll just, you know, follow along. My in-laws, I don't know a lot of people that can say this. My in-laws are my godsend. They are the most amazing, most humble, most genuine, most helpful people in this world. And anytime I'm like, mom, I'm, I want to do this. She's like, go, go live your life, Judy. And then she takes my kids. So in a, in a sense, yeah. in a sense, I, it's, there's a lot of mom guilt, but at the same time, I know my kids are being taken care of right now by their daddy who's feeding them alu brote. Mm -hmm. And I wish I was having alu That's brote. the best. Yeah. That, that, well, that kind of sums it up is mm -hmm. that when you have the perfect storm or the perfect situation, mm -hmm. it works for someone who is, you know, by themselves with their children mm -hmm. and then to try to leave and to mm -hmm. try to figure that out to chase a career mm -hmm. it's tough like mm -hmm. as a man we can say that we're privileged in the sense that we leave to go provide for our families yeah. and you know taking the place of a mother or a woman mm -hmm. I couldn't do it I have two kids at home mm -hmm. there's no I'm the, f the fun dad I'll have yeah. fun at home it's great <laughs> I can do all that but trying to keep the house in order, cleaning dishes. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to use my washing machines till oh this day. Like, yeah. I have no like idea. Husband. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let, let's make some noise for all the mothers out there. They're amazing. Yeah. Moms and are amazing. I guess what to take out of that is if you have that perfect situation, then yes, yeah. take advantage of that and don't be afraid to, yes. to put yourself Ask out there. Ask for help. You can't yeah. do everything by yourself. Yeah. I, I, I am where I am because of my support system. I don't take credit for all of it, like I, any of it actually. It's because of them I'm allowed to pursue my dreams. It really is. All of them. Every single woman, including my husband in my life, they have sometimes put their own personal needs on the back burner just so I could have a master class in London or here or wherever it is. Um, I, ex I consider myself extremely lucky and, um, and very fortunate. I understand not a lot of people have that support and I don't take it for granted at all. Like I'm very lucky. That's amazing. That's amazing, yeah. man. Um, let's talk about what is coming up for Harp and Pink Orchid. Uh, we brought champagne, which mm -hmm. we normally normally we have like the desi daru on the table. We got I'm you know okay with desi Jameson, daru. all that stuff. <laughs> we brought champagne, so we're well, you guys are welcome to pop it if anybody's a champagne fan. Okay. But we are here to celebrate your career, your Aww, story, thank you guys. everything that you've you guys done. Are so sweet. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. No. It honestly means so much to me. And um, I can't wait to come back in April. We are doing our master class and our pop-up shop. And it is going to be the most epicest ever. I Epicest. Uh, That's a new we've word. We've been inventing yeah. words. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it knows. Epicest. <laughs> um, and um, it's going to be fabulous. And I wish that, you know, Toronto turns out especially with Brampton and Mississauga fam. I mean, how, does, how does one apply for a masterclass and what, is, you what do you learn in a masterclass? You just have to register online. It's a one-day course where we teach you how to do bridal hair and makeup. It's through four looks all together and Victoria and I teach it. Okay. And then we do have a buddy party afterwards, which you guys DJ, you should know. Victoria's yeah. the one from there. Burnaby Bend, right? Yeah, yeah Burnaby Bend. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Victoria's got it. our Judy. She's yeah. our master artist for hair and she is just amazing. So uh, Victoria does hair, you do makeup, makeup. got it. I, and then you have a roster I saw on your IG. Yes. You got, uh, I saw 12. Is there more than 12? There's or? 26. 26. Oh, wow. Sure, I thought wow. we had a big Yeah, team. I thought. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. I got the hottest chicks in the game wearing my yeah. chains. <laughs> okay, Jay-Z. Are there POS chains? We do have the U.S. <laughs> hey, oh, but Daddy wants one. Yeah, yeah, I would like one next time you guys come down. You know? Let's, uh, yes. let's make that official. I heard you guys have really good-looking spouses. 
Uh, yes. I'm not married. You do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're very stylish and fast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I was like, I don't know what to wear. Do the guy? Do you wear joggers and you, sweatpants? Should I wear joggers? Um, should I wear a hoodie? They're like, their wives are very hot. I'm like, okay, cool. I, then actually, I'm going to wear my what I wear. When we had the idea of having you on, we were thinking about getting them to do the oh, interview. Oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We were yeah. trying to figure it out, and then this happened... Like you know, we would have just like started minute-ish. doing girl talk the whole time. Yeah. No questions. I'd be like, you're so hot. No, you're so hot. No, you're so hot. <laughs> no, we'll do that next time because yeah. this is not the only time we want to have you on. Next time you're in town, let's get together. Let's 100%. catch up because you mentioned some big news and we'll discuss if we can put that on the episode or not. Mm-hmm. But we want to celebrate our women. We want to celebrate the success that you guys are having in the industry. And mm-hmm. we want you guys to continue to have that success and Thank grow. You. And the ones that are coming up behind you, to give them encouragement that hey, you can build a brand, you can build, you know, your your own line, your own lane. I can't even talk about tequila, it's okay. but <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, build uh, build a liveliness for yourself and support your families. One hundred percent. I really want to thank Frequency as, as well because the first pop up that we ever had was in twenty. 20- 14 or 2013 I can't remember and you were the first company that actually came on board and hosted our pop-up and ever since then we've probably had 13 and you guys have always been on board so thank you guys for supporting a woman-owned BIPOC business and always being there for us so heart you guys even more great great thank you thank you man um anything else we want to mention before we go guys should we do another tequila shot? Let's okay. do another tequila shot. Yeah, let's celebrate, man. Let's Today's a, a day of celebration. Looks like the staying here today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again, Harp. Thank you. We love Thank you guys. guys. We love you guys Pink Orchid. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank awesome. You. That was awesome. Yeah. You guys are so nice. Thank you.